My name is Monica Gleberman, and you're listening to Silence On Set Podcast. On today's podcast, we're talking to the cast of Tiny Beautiful Things. The show is based on the best-selling collection by Cheryl Strayed and follows Claire, a floundering writer who becomes an advice columnist while her own life is falling apart. So to talk about the show and what we can expect, first up is Sarah Pigeon. I wanted to ask you first off, you do such a great job of playing a younger kind of Catherine Hahn character. Did you st- at all to try to get some of her mannerisms and the way that you think that she might react as a younger person? I think that, you know, I was able to go to set a few times and watch her work and just sort of, you know, get the sense of this is how Claire at 49 moves through the world, how she says things, you know, seeing her interact with the environment around her. And I, I think I definitely took some inspiration from that. But the, what I focused on most is the energy that Catherine created as this person. It's reactive. It's honest, at times quite unfiltered. And, you know, that's that's true about the writing. And that's true about young Claire's writing as well. You know, she's very sharp tongue. If she had the ability, I think, to sort of rewind and redo it, she would say things differently, react differently, but she doesn't. I think, you know, I, I try to tell myself, like, this is still that the, the Claire that we're seeing in Catherine at 49 is a sum of the experiences that she's had throughout her life. And some of those I get to explore to relieve this pressure that I don't have to, that there is room to grow as this person. And there are parts of this person that we don't see and that how you act and talk and react and you, when you're 20 years old will not be the same when you're 49, with some exceptions, as as you saw in the show, you know, sometimes we sort of flip flop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, for you personally, did you, when I watched it, there was a lot of like reflection on my life. Like I was going, Ooh, I wonder if, because of this, this happened. So did you at all, when you were working on the character, look at your life and kind of do a, Ooh, I'm so different at 15 than I was now and kind of relate to your character in that way? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think, that's what I'm most excited about this show that people sort of I think it's really hard not to hear the letters and open up this welcome in a sense of reflection and examine your own life I think you know it's there's such universal truths and moments whether or not it's the relationship that one has to their mother the relationship that they have with their partners their siblings you know it's there's universal experiences that are explored in this show so I feel like it's it was important possible not to drive home from set every night and think about my own life. And if I could take Sugar's advice and how similar or dissimilar I felt to the characters that were you know, maneuvering their own life choices and experiences. Yeah, I think that this show has really expanded how I think of things. And so much of it is like reframing that a lot of the Dear Sugar letters do. And I just want to kind of end with like a two-parter, which is basically, I want to know what what was the most shocking thing that you learned about yourself and your character while filming this? And then what is the biggest takeaway? Because there's so many layers in this with tragedy, with family, with understanding what all of that means, processing. So I just kind of want to know those two aspects that you kind of took away from. I think the biggest takeaway is that no matter how much time you have away from these massive events in your life, that the processing can, no matter, yeah, no matter how much time has gone by, it can still feel like it happened the day before. And that grief is complicated. It is so all-encompassing. There's guilt for not spending more time. There's shame because of how you spent your time. There's joy because of the beauty that this person or this thing brought into your life. There's sadness that you don't get to experience it again. So it's so multifaceted and complicated, which is why I think grief can be so long-lasting. And I think if you continue to feel grief, it's not like your healing process has there's faults in your healing process. That that's just the nature of grief. And then I think the biggest thing I learned from my character is that I think I thought that I was a little less sharp tongue and a little bit less reactive, but I think that that I can be. And maybe it, she doesn't have the same vocabulary as Claire and I don't have the same experiences all the time as Claire. But when you feel like you are in the right, 
I think a little bit of Claire can come out in me. Yeah, I guess that's my big, that's that's a little self-reflection that I have to do. And finally, we have Quentin and Claire. I wanted to ask you, why do you think it's so difficult for Danny and Claire to kind of make things work? And why do they work so hard at it? I think one of the reasons it's so difficult is that, at least speaking from Danny's side, Danny hasn't really addressed the things going on within him that are keeping him from even truly knowing himself or feeling content about himself at the time. And I don't think that you can truly be with someone else or make things work with someone else if you're not, you know, whole within, you know. Danny is at a real confused place at that time of not having become the person that he always saw himself being. And, you know, I think a lot of times you always have in in your mind who you're going to be in the future. And then you look up one day and it's the future and you're not that person. And you've got to kind of re-figure things out. And I think in that re-figuring things out, something was lost with Claire. And I, you know, can't 100% speak for Claire, but it felt like she was in a similar place, but in a place where she is actually finding herself. And so in them both internally in these confusing places, while also trying to make this thing work, it's just like, just too much at once, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of, that's kind of how I feel, like why they couldn't just, couldn't make it work. But I I often thought of the same thing as like, can we just figure it out, you know? (laughs) Can we just make it work? I know, because I love you guys together. And I did um, too. I did how too. How is it for you two as an actor? It's so weird, I think, to kind of see someone play you as a younger version of you, like your character. So was that weird or like surreal or like what did that feel like? Because he did such a great job. I mean, it yeah, looked, yeah. It like it was you, younger. Like it's just mm-hmm. crazy. He was great. And it was weird. And like, you know, from a purely selfish point, I wanted to play younger me, you know, and also because I, I feel like on this show, more than any other show that I've ever done, I I did not get to interact on screen with so much of the cast, you know, because we're in different timelines. So I just wasn't going to be there. And I felt like Sarah and Owen and not that I would have, but Merritt and everybody from that timeline was just so great. And I'd be th- seeing them do these just incredible things on the table read. So when I saw a younger Danny, I was like, come on, we can young me up. Like, hey, we can do this, you know, but obviously it wouldn't make sense for me to go back, but Catherine not. So yeah, you know, and me and him, we met beforehand and, and talked about some things, but one thing I loved is he was just like, you know, honestly, if it's cool with you, he was like, I'm good. I'm going to do my personal backstory. And he was like, and, and, you know, other than some things that are just set as far as Danny things, he was like, I don't even know who you are yet. And he was like, and I was like, shoot, you're right. Like, I haven't become me yet. You know, you're me at, I believe it was 22. So, you know, just go do you. And yeah, it was funny. He actually asked me, he was like, you know, is it anything you want to ask me? And I was like, uh, <laughs> but it was, it was cool. He's, yeah, he's great. He was, he's so cool too, like in real life. And I was like, oh, great. This is going to be great. Cause you know, at that time period, I was still a rock star. Things were just, you know, blossoming and growing off. So I I think I would have that confidence, that cool thing that he just naturally brought to the table. And maybe by the time that like, oh, now I'm a father of a 16 year old, I've been in this relationship for how long, maybe I've lost a bit of that. And maybe that can be something tangibly seen, you know, over the life of the show. Yeah, yeah. So basically, I just wanted to know, it's kind of, again, like a two parter, but for you, for your character, Mm -hmm. are you kind of happy with where things sort of end up without kind of giving things away, I guess, if you could make any changes or, you know, look back on your own life, did you find parallels like while you were working as an actor yeah yeah as far as the happy side of it i think danny makes decisions that that needed to be made like he needs to figure out himself and really kind of get to a place where he's truly happy with where he is you know not with what he thinks or not potential just truly happy as a human being where he is and i think he was taking steps towards getting there and i was happy with that parallel wise you know i feel like you have to find the connections between you and whatever you do, you know, when you're playing a role. And I think I really just connected with, on a personal side of just the not being who you saw you were going to be, you know, as a, at a younger age, or at least on that timeline, you know, I think there's like a lot of deep things that come with that, that I was able to tap into as Danny of really just feeling a bit unsatisfied. And I think I was just like tapping into things like, oh, I'm not satisfied with this. And Danny is not satisfied. So like, let me lean into that. And yeah, I think those two things just kind of connected of like trying to put on this brave face every day and act like I have it together, but really on the inside 
died at the at the very heart of things. I'm not where I wanted to be or who I wanted to be. And especially connect to moments where I felt like that in the past. I think we've all probably felt like, man, I'm not where I want to be right now. And I was able to just really kind of tap into that and portray it, hopefully, you know, believably on screen. So <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed listening to Sarah and Quentin talk about their characters and what we can expect with this new series, Tiny Beautiful Things. The show is set to premiere on April 7th exclusively on Hulu. So make sure you go and check it out. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you're updated on all of our latest podcasts and head over to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe so you're updated on all of our video content. Oh, 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 oh